Last night we started the process of lime washing or white washing the chicken coop, so we recorded this. Hi, welcome to the Daddy Curbs Farm. We are making great progress on our chicken coop that is being created out of all repurposed and recycled materials. We love how it looks old, we love how it is going to be functional, but we really want to coat the surface to help protect the boards from deteriorating further and also to give some antimicrobial protection for the chickens. Historically, a lime wash or whitewash was used inside coops and barns to brighten the space, give a protective coating to the wood, stone, or brick, and also to uh, help prevent pests uh, from getting into that wood, stone, brick that might infect the chickens or the cows or because it has an antimicrobial property. Now lime, the uh, type of lime that is used is a hydrated lime. It is very caustic so you have to be uh, extremely careful when handling it. Make sure that you're wearing your gloves and a mask. Now here on the Daddy Curbs farm we're not experts. This is our first time doing this and Everything we read online said that the typical recipe is six to eight cups of lime, two cups of salt to a gallon of water. Now we don't have the salt, so I also read that salt is not a mandatory or necessary ingredient. It's typically added for uh, prevention of mold. Um, I don't think we're going to have to worry a whole lot about mold, so we're going to try the recipe without any salt. It's a very good idea to wear a mask because you don't want this powder getting into your lungs. I'm going to try to scoop it in such a way that I'm not creating a big dust storm. It probably would have been better to add the lime to the water so we weren't stirring that up. But it wasn't too bad. We're just going to take a stir stick. Get that mixed in pretty well. Now that the lime is no longer powder, I don't think there's very much risk of it being an issue with lungs, but we do have to protect our hands. Probably should be wearing a long sleeve shirt too, but let's see how this goes on. This is, this is very old fence wood that's been repurposed for the coop. There's a lot of opportunity for bugs, chicken mites, fleas, all kinds of things getting into this wood and making a home. We don't want that. The higher pH of the lime will help uh, deter those bugs from getting into the wood in the first place. They won't want that high pH uh, environment for their home. As it dries, it's going to turn more white. Right now we're just going to try to get a good coat on all over. In some cases it's rolled on like paint or sprayed on. Uh, put it through a, like a garden sprayer. We're just going to try with the, uh, we're just going to try with the brush right now see if we can get a good coat. There's a lot of drippage because of the uh, being kind of watery, but overall it's going on pretty nice and I think it's going to make a really nice coat. It'll look nice as well as serve a purpose.
day two and we're finishing putting the whitewash on mama curbs doing the the work and me doing the video opposite of last night what do you think mama curbs i like the way it turned out i really like the dry after it's dry what it looks like it's very traditional looking yeah that dry pasty white and i like vintage and old because i think there's a lot of character and a lot of history with that some of the reasons we did whitewash or lime wash instead of uh, paint on the chicken coop was for the antimicrobial effect. Uh, it changes the pH of the wood. Little critters that would be living that would be living in the wood uh, that likes to crawl into the crevices of the wood uh, and make their homes like the the chicken mites and the fleas and uh, just I can't list them all, but those things that would get onto your chickens. They make homes in the crevices of the wood. Well, with the lime wash or the white wash, it's, it's not a very kind environment for those critters. So uh, it's just a nice way to keep um, some of that pest control in, in the coops and barns. Now, most of this interior should be fairly safe. This is a water soluble solution. So a lot of what's on the outside over time could wash off and we know that we're prepared for reapplication but typically uh, historically according to what i read i read several um, information sites blog sites wikipedia about this process and historically this is an annual event people will whitewash or lime wash their uh, the insides of their barns and coops and sometimes even their kitchens or um, uh, interiors of houses sometimes got the same effect because it was a uh, cheaper than paint option especially when paint wasn't really available and yeah so it uh, ends up being uh, multi-purpose it looks nice it serves a, a purpose for uh, pro providing a coat that uh, keeps um, the nasties down pest and the microbes so yeah, I think it's going to look real nice. It's going to brighten this space up. It made these old fence boards look like vintage shiplap. I mean, it's just really cool looking. So I am excited about that. It goes on really fast. There is a lot of drippage. But that lime, as it goes into the soil, as it drips down and goes into the soil, it's not hurting anything and in some cases could be helping the soil. We're going to do the exterior and interior of the coop, the house, and the nest boxes. That's going to provide, uh, you know, that the protection that we're looking for in, on all surfaces. Yeah, last night when I painted the other one, I thought that is not going to show up, but it surely did. It turned... It turned white. Let me show you that other nest box. Mama Curbs is going to do the interior. Last night I did most of the exterior. Look, that box turned white. Totally appreciating the drop front on the nest boxes. If you haven't seen that video, go check that out. It dries to a powdery finish and will rub off. So on the interior, you can see uh, that it does come off, but it does soak in pretty well into the wood. Are we going to do the boards on the roof? No. No, no need? No. I like them like that. Yeah. What shit would deter, deter raccoons and possums? Yeah, that would be nice if whitewash would keep the larger predators away. They may want to move in. It looks so nice. <laughs> Free dinner in a whitewashed kitchen. <laughs> the lime does have to be a specific kind of lime. It's not just the type, of, it's not like dolomite or whatever that you would throw out on your garden. It's masonry's lime or brick lime or hydrated lime. It's that, uh, you have to have that specific hydrated lime. And uh, I went to look for it at the big box stores and they didn't have it. I looked at some of the other, the smaller, uh, some feed stores and different things, and only one place 
out of the three feed stores that I looked, only one had it, and it was a 50 pound bag, which is fine because it'll last forever. So it may be a little bit of a hassle to find the exact product that you need, but once you find it, you know, what I did is wrapped it up in a plastic bag just to keep it from being uh, eaten by the goat. The goat likes to eat paper bags and also to keep critters from digging into the bag or whatever. I just want to keep it a little more safe and I don't want it to get wet. Whatever mess we make on surfaces like this will clean up as soon as it rains. I found it interesting as I was looking up some information about the whitewash that some people didn't want white so they would color the lime wash with something and one of the things there's a whole list of things that people would color it with but one of the things that uh, historically people would color the lime wash to make it pink is pig's blood I guess when they butcher the pigs they would also do their lime wash and uh, make make their kitchens pink or their coops or barn I don't know what they wanted pink but I just thought that was an interesting ingredient when uh, mama curbs just said and it makes a lot of sense that you could easily make pink with beets. Beets will stain anything and you can make a nice pinkish purpley color with beets and your pig wouldn't have to die. Working on the interior. Like I said, this is, this is where it's more critical. This is where the chickens will be sleeping and gathered all bunched up. So we wanna make sure that the surfaces in here are, um, not hospitable to the mites and fleas and... I hate chicken mites. Chicken mites are the worst. Yeah, once you get a case of mites, it's really difficult to get rid of them. We had one coop last year or two years ago mm -hmm. that had uh, mites and we had to isolate them, quarantine, and then take some pretty drastic measures to get rid of them. I know, somebody's going to say, how did you end up getting rid of the chicken mites? Uh, I don't remember the entire process, but um, I know that we kept the other birds away. We isolated them. We gave those birds in that coop a regular bathing of diatomaceous earth, like we fluffed it under their feathers and all that. We ended up uh, finally uh, scooping up all the bedding and burning it. We burned the bedding, we burned the nest boxes that they were in because we were afraid that they were they were in the crevices of the nest boxes. And um, let's see, what else did we do? I think that was pretty much it. We just kept cleaning up the bedding, burning the bedding, burning the nest box, and giving the chickens a, a lot of diatomaceous earth to roll in, you know, when they do their bathing. And then also for, um, uh, and wood ash, we put lots of wood ash in the floor of the coop so they could roll in that as well. And I think the very final uh, thing that we did was uh, we did end up using on the chickens that seemed to be the most persistent in keeping those mites, like we just weren't getting them off. We bought some of the powdered pyrethian, I think that's what it's called, it is a poison and we really wanted that to be the last case scenario. Uh, and I'm glad we saved it for last. Of course we were going to anyway but um, everything else was clean so it was just getting those last few mites on those last few birds and it worked really well we didn't have to use a lot of the poison but we did end up using that so then when when we went um, when we cleaned it up after all of that was done uh, we took we moved it was one of the coops that we can move it was the large uh, dog kennel coop and we moved it and then scraped everything to the center of that area and did one last burn in the middle of that. I know it sounds really exhausting and lots of burning, but it worked out well for us. We had a place where we could do that and we could move the coop. Uh, we may not have needed to do that last burn, but we just felt like it was something that we wanted to do to make sure that they were gone. Because uh, we didn't want them to spread to the other coops and so far we haven't had mites in any of the coops ever except for that one. So they're gone now and the whitewash is one preventative measure to help keep them out of this coop.
Here on the Daddy Curbs Farm, I truly believe that everyone has a story and every story counts. Thank you so much for being a part of my story through this video and letting me be a part of yours. I'll talk to you soon. You okay in there, Mama Curbs? Yep. I'm not saying, you know, you can't butcher your pig if you want to, but anyway. <laughs>